is your gun broken, knife doll, mm -hmm. armor all torn up, jays creased, marriage in shambles, and multi-tool a little bit creaky when you pull out the corkscrew that no one uses. <laughs> well, you're in luck, because I've broken into your house and abducted you against your will, teach you how to repair broken items, create new items, and keep your current items maintained. Aren't you excited, Billy? Who are you? Don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you. Unless you deserve it. Ah, there we go. Why are you in my car? Shut up! Anyway, did you finally find that god tier gun you've been looking for for the last three months, but then you realize that it's as broken as my grandpa's marriage? Well, don't worry. I'm gonna be going through each and every step of the repair and crafting system and teaching you step by step how to get everything necessary to repair this broken rifle. And subscribe for infinite steel War. Possibly the most important thing to know in Anomaly is keeping your weapons in working condition. If not maintained, your weapons will quickly go from full auto to bullet hack. Now repairing is remarkably simple, it may seem confusing at first, but that's just cause you're STUPID! Just kidding, you're not stupid, you're um, uh, new to the game and haven't quite mastered all its features. To repair a damaged item, you'll first need a compatible repair kit. To find a repair kit that works with a damaged item, hover over the item that you want to repair and look in your inventory for items that are highlighted. Then, either double click whichever highlighted the repair kit of your choice, or right click it and select use. Afterwards, when this menu pops up, select the item you want to repair. Take note, different items require different repair kits. On top of this, repair tools have not usable below condition level property, which means that any item below that percentage can't be repaired by simple maintenance items like glue tubes or gun oil, and instead require more complex repair kits. Now, when you select the item, you'll notice all this stuff pop up on the left. Now, first, you probably won't have any idea what all this stuff means. Let me explain. Some items in your inventory, when you check their details, will have a repair bonus property with a percentage. This is how much this item will add to the overall repair. Keep in mind, any supportive materials added will be used up and are therefore gone forever, so make sure you only use things you really don't care about. Quick thing to mention, if you use something that has multiple uses, like a repair kit, it'll only take up one use for that repair. Note, if you're not hostile with the mercenaries, don't use patches for bonus repair items. The 1% bonus generally isn't worth it even disregarding what I'm about to say, but the mercenary's chef, Aslan, has a lottery where you can turn in patches for different rewards, including endgame loot. You can get artifacts and high level equipment this way. One of the handiest and potentially most important things in the whole game is the details menu. Here you can see pretty much everything regarding the item you select, including info about the item ranging from its description, the stats, to the item's weight, its uses, compatible ammo and attachments if it's a weapon, the item's base components, which repair items are compatible with it, which upgrades it accepts, and so much more depending on the item. For example, if you check the details on a repair kit, you'll be able to see what supportive materials the repair kit can use. For equipment like guns, knives, and armor, you can see which repair kits are supported by that item. Now, of course, to repair your items in the first place, you're going to need one of those repair kits I've been gushing about. There are plenty of different repair kits and plenty of different ways to get them. Repair items range from basic glue and oil all the way up to specialized repair kits, each intended for different levels of damage. And because it's my job, I'll go over all the ways to get them. This one's pretty self-explanatory, but does go deeper than one might suspect at first. You can buy repair kits and other stuff like supportive materials at technicians. At first their inventory is kinda lackluster, but as you go on and get more goodwill points with a faction, the traders will offer better deals and better nice. items, thus meaning you can buy items that can actually help you repair better equipment. You can occasionally find repair kits on dead stalkers, in stashes, and even just laying around in hidden areas. They won't always have all the uses for them and are very rare, so this isn't a very reliable means of acquiring the kits you need. Now, you can craft repair kits yourself, but it's about as difficult and tedious as actually going out and repairing a real gun you found under 7 pounds of dried dog crap. But if you insist on going this route, I'll give you a guide on how to do it. First off, you obviously have to get the items to make the repair kit in the first place. Except, you don't know which parts you need because you don't have the recipe to make it. Hey! Hey! No looking up on Google. That's a sin! Instead, listen to my guide, which itself is on YouTube. Which is owned by Google.
Now, before we can even do hardly any crafting in the first place, we're gonna need the recipes to craft with. To do this, sneak downstairs and borrow your mom's cookbook, then realize that we're not cooking. To begin, you'll be able to craft some things without recipes, but for most things, you'll need recipes. So how do you get the recipes in question? Well, as with all other questions, the answer is killing people. You can occasionally find crafting notes on dead people, and sometimes in stashes, but mostly on dead people. Once you've acquired the recipe in question, you can see what components you need to make the item in question, and then go get them. Except, oh, how am I supposed to get all this junk? Well, let's go back to the past and see what you did wrong. Uh, th there we go. See when you left that one little useless item on that dead guy instead of picking it up and hauling it for three hours until you found a stash to drop it off in and forget about it? Well, now you need it. So always make sure to pick up all sorts of random garbage you don't need and shove it in a stash for later. This will make sure that every second you play is as grueling and unenjoyable as possible, all so that later you can be slightly less miserable. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but for the love of Yalda, boss, do not, and I mean do not under any circumstances, get rid of steel wool. Steel wool is literally the most important item for crafting weapon repair kits, and, like that one Lego piece when you actually need it, you'll never be able to find it once you actually need it. You can throw away anything else, just don't throw away steel wool. So, say it with me, children. I pledge allegiance to steel wool and the repair kit for which it stands, one item indivisible with repair and craft for all. Yeah, that was the stupidest shit I've ever said in my entire life. Now that you have the items to make the repair kit, let's actually make it. Except, whoops, you don't have the right tools to make this. Well, looks like you're screwed. Oh, Sliss, aren't you gonna tell us how to get tools? And I say, no! You figure it out yourself, you ingrate! Ignore that the entire point of this video is to teach you how to use the repair system. I don't want to tell you! Nah, I'm just kidding. I'll be discussing it later in the video. But it'll give you a timestamp here, so if you want to skip to that, we'll do it. One last thing, don't bother keeping notes on you after you've read them. You can check notes in the guide section of your PDA afterwards, so they're literally just dead weight. But before we can get into the crafting, you'll need the components themselves. To get these, you'll need to disassemble items. Now, this is relatively simple, but can be confusing at first. Disassembling items gives you some of the item's components, which you can see by checking the details tab in the right-click menu. To get the correct pieces to repair our zero-durability gun, check which components you need, then do the unthinkable, and write a note in real life using your pudgy gamer hands to make a checklist of what components you need, then go smashing other guns to see if they have the parts you need. If they have even just one of the parts you need, smash it down like an orphanage and pull out that sweet, sweet component. CRAP! Okay, time to indulge in one of the oldest traditions known to gamer kind, save scumming. Load a previous save in which you haven't yet ripped that gun in half, and then try again at the aforementioned ripping in half until you get the piece you want. Continue this little ritual until you have at least four pieces for the gun we're trying to repair. Now, before we're able to disassemble an item, you need a disassembling tool. There are three different disassembling tools, grooming kits, Swiss knives, and a multi-tool. Grooming kits and Swiss knives are good for disassembling most things, like junk and armor, but guns can only be disassembled by the good old multi-tool. To get a multi-tool, just buy it from a technician. You can technically craft one, but just really not worth it. Just, just buy one. To disassemble an item, all you need to do is right-click the item, then hold the Alt key and click Disassemble. If you're not holding Alt, the game will prevent you from disassembling the item. Before we go any further, I think it's best that we figure out how these individual components work. These are obviously the components that a gun or suit of armor is made up of, and as you use your equipment, its durability decreases, thus the durability of each of these components decreases as well. Therefore, it's extremely important that these components stay in good quality. Now, to repair these parts, it's pretty similar to repairing any other item, but you need very special items to repair certain components. For gun components, you need... The file is used to repair the vast majority of gun parts with a wide variety of what it can repair. The ramrod is slightly less versatile than the file, being used mostly only for barrels as well as gas tubes. Files can also repair gas tubes, so ramrods are really only necessary for cleaning gun barrels. The multi-tool continues to be the best item in the game, as not only can it take apart guns, but can fix parts for them too. Truly the god of guns, choosing what lives and what dies. The multi-tool is used to repair triggers for guns. For armor components, you need... This is THE armor repair kit. Literally 91.91% .91 of armor components are repaired with this toolkit. The basic sewing thread is just that, 
basic. It's literally only used to repair four components, those being cloth sheets, cloth sheets, synthetic, durable textiles, and mil spec textiles. Now, while repairing a component, do as you would any other item, but make sure to use a supportive material. Look at that difference. Instead of using one and a half files, you can just use one and some random junk from your inventory. One quick thing, make sure to repair the multi-tool, as it too will break if not maintained. You can repair it with a three-piece sharpening stone set. Before you can craft, you're going to need recipes. We discussed those earlier, so check those off, and also tools. Let me tell you how to get tools, as well as what tool sets do what. For those who skipped to this part of the video, I'll resume what we are doing and show you how to make the repair kit for our rifle, as well as how to get the tools required to craft it. In this case, we need advanced tools. Now, toolkits are only found in stashes. Figuring that out isn't the hard part, figuring out how to get as many stashes as possible is. Now, stashes can be found nearly everywhere, but you usually don't have loot in them unless you get the coordinates for them on your PDA first. The main way to get stash coordinates is to complete jobs for other stalkers. This is the most reliable way of getting stash coordinates. Another good way to find stash coordinates is to hack into dead stalkers PDAs and read their messages. They don't always contain stash coordinates, but they frequently do, so always make sure to check them before selling them to someone. If the PDA is locked, go to a technician and pay him to hack it for you. Now that you know how to find stashes, you are entirely at the mercy of RNGesus. Jesus. Be vigilant in your search for tools, stalker. I know you can do it. Good luck and Godspeed. Once you've found the tools, you can actually get to crafting the repair kit. We're going to be putting together the Small Bore Rifle Repair Kit. For this recipe, you'll need... Once you have all this junk, you need to go to a technician and ask to use his vice. This will cost you a thousand rubles and you will be given permission to use his workshop for five minutes. Once at the vice, open it up and click on the tab of a wrench and a screwdriver. Then, select the repair toolkits category. Once it's open, select this to red toolbox here. If you have everything required to make the toolkit, click on craft. There we go! Now that we have everything we need, we can finally get to restoring that gun you've always wanted. Now, using everything we just learned, made, and found, I'm going to show you how to get your rifle in the new working order. If you don't have a broken gun and would, for some reason, still like to go along, I, I don't know, shoot your gun a couple times with a Glock, that'll break it enough for you to repair it. Go to the technician's workbench and open the tab of a wrench on a nut. Then, click down here on the item you wish to restore. When all this pops up, select the parts you wish to replace, and then go over here to choose the piece you wish to replace it with. You can only swap out however many pieces that this green number here says. Once the parts you want are swapped out, click the repair button. Then, congratulations! You successfully repaired your gun and have the knowledge to not only keep it in working condition, but also fix up other things like armor, and even create new things like drugs or bullets. Upgrading. Uh, let's let's get this over with. To uh, to upgrade your armor, or gun, or flashlight, or whatever, you first need the proper repair kit and the correct upgrade part. There's a billion and six different upgrade kits, and although they're relatively common, it's, it's pretty much impossible that you'll find all the ones you need. So forget everything I just said. You want to know the real way to upgrade your stuff? Uh, go to a technician and buy all the stupid uh, upgrades for uh, four billion dollars. Alright, here's a quick rundown of all the stuff I just talked about in this video. So since I spent weeks, even months, making this crap video, you can get all the info you need out of it in 15 or so seconds. How to restore a heavily damaged piece of equipment. Get tools. To do this, loot stashes. To get stashes, do jobs. Additionally, hack PDAs. Once tools are required, find a technician. Buy a multi-tool. Tear apart items with the components you need. Pay attention to what the gun parts your guns or armor are made up of. Use files and ramrods or whatever to fix up all the little bits. When repairing an item, make sure to use hops number 9. Buy the proper repair kit from the technician. To do this, either get the Deep Pockets achievement or get enough goodwill points for it to show up in his inventory. 
Beg on your knees for the technician to let you use his vice grip. If you've given him all the toolkits, he'll happily oblige. If not, it'll cost you $10.24. Click on the weapon or armor you wish to repair. Swap out all the pieces you can replace and finish up. You can only replace a certain amount of components, and your repair kits only have a set amount of uses. To get the most out of your repair kits, you can repair a weapon to a certain percentage, around 85 to 87%, then repair it using Brunox Spray or Hops Number 9. There you go, now you have the know of how to fix. Oh yeah, one last thing to mention, if you're someone that likes setting money on fire, you can pay a technician to repair your items, but I highly suggest you don't, as it costs about as much as a mortgage. Okay, that's the video, thank you all so much for watching till the end, click on this video here to watch a crappy beginner's guide, and click here to subscribe. Come on, do it, subscribe. If you do, I promise you that all your dreams will come true, but only the weird ones. Goodbye!